in the previous episode. Hello again, everybody, on the previous episode. Zach's been seeing some shit, uh, and that's basically it. Oh yeah, we met Kylie. She's very sweet, very cute. Talking to strangers as a little girl shouldn't be doing that. But yeah, so we're trying to comfort Isabella right now. We can still fix this, yeah. It ain't too late. We, we could still fix this. There's three of us here. Okay, good. I was like, why would Stay Silent help any at all, you know? Four if you count Rebecca. No, she's she's staying away from this. She lifts her gaze at me, eyes steady and shoulders squared as she holds it against the baffled look I gave her. Although in the next second it immediately softens and it takes me by surprise nevertheless. In those brief moments, it's like I faced a different person. I don't want to involve her in this any more than I already have. Both of you as well. I already said it. That's completely out of the question. Stop asking. Still and all, that's two extra heads who can do the thinking. Between us three, I'm sure we'll figure something out pretty soon. Don't make this whole thing sound like it's a piece of cake to deal with. It ain't. But better than sitting around, yeah? Plan is still a plan. You're going to shoot yourself in the foot one day with that kind of thinking. We don't even know who's doing this. The last two murders might just be similar incidents done by two different suspects. <laughs> Hasn't stopped you from going after them before. Remember that time when you... Okay, stop right there. There will be no retelling of that incident today, Z-Man. Or ever. <laughs> Keep calling me Z-Man and maybe I will. <laughs> Suddenly, Isabella laughs. Though muffled by her hands, it rings light and easy against a thick tension in the room. Still a far cry from the usual cheer she carries, but brings a welcome shift in the otherwise dreary mood. Thanks, you two. I'll tell you about it when he's not around. Give it up, Z-Man. She's not interested. Who says I'm not? <laughs> Ash makes a face but chuckles at the jest despite himself. Why am I even friends with you two? Why are we friends with you? And like this, most of our worries ebb away, if only for a few moments. They take their leave mere minutes close to sundown. But regardless of the lighter mood, little has been said of their plans, only vague hints of what they're aiming to do after. While it ain't any of my business to know, something about this whole thing still gnaws at me. A tiny passing thought urges me to do something as well. At this hour, the streets are once again busy with people heading home after a hard day's work. Little of the bustle matters to them as they step out of the crowded walkway, however. Ash especially. There is only one goal in his mind and I'd wager there's nothing I can do to stop him at this point. He's probably decided on it long before they made the decision to drop by. But despite this, Isabella lags behind. A worried crease is back on her forehead as she watches Ash leave to get his car. Something wrong, Bella? No, I... Actually, can you check on Becca for me after this? I really didn't get the chance to tell her where I'm headed off to. Tell her I'm okay and we're... No, just that. You sure I should skip on that part? If she finds out about this, she'll be angry. I don't really want to deal with angry Rebecca. It gives me a stomachache just thinking about it. Neither do I, but... I'll handle it if she gets mad. Just make sure she's safe and tell her to be careful. You too. Take care of yourself. I... Almost abruptly, she pauses, the gaze in her eyes hardening as she lapses into another one of those long distant silences from earlier. This ain't just because of the whole fiasco with the letter anymore. I don't want what happened to Rose to happen to you guys as well. This one. This one cut deeper. Before I can ask about it, Ashton returns, casually swinging his car keys on one hand and gestures at Isabella. Come on, we don't have much time. Shirley's waiting. Who's sure? Oh, right. Don't answer that. I don't want to hear it, you huge dork. It's the name of his car. Says the person who gave her stuffed toys names. Batcat? Really? It's cute. Yours is just weird. I'll see you later, Zach. My car is called Stanley. She spares me another smile, and as I watch her walk off, only now did it occur to me that none of those she gave today ever did reach her eyes. I make a grab for the back of Ash's parka. He staggers briefly before correcting himself and shooting me a confused stare. Is she alright? Uh, what? Who's okay? Isabella. She's been... I don't know... out of it today? Did something happen earlier? The scowl on his face says it all. She's actually been like that this morning. I'll ask, but... Just do me a favor and watch over her. We have no idea what we're dealing with. I don't know what happened to her since the last time I saw her, but from how she's been doing today, whatever it is, it seems like a pretty big deal. Wait, you didn't annoy her again, did you? Because I swear to God, if you did, you've got another thing coming for you. What? No. Why would I? I'm just asking. I'll take your word for it. 
But if you can find out what's bothering her, that'd be nice. Honestly, I don't think it's the letter this time. I'll see what I can do. Make sure you keep yourself out of harm's way, all right? Yeah, you too. Don't do anything reckless again. Reckless, no. But I can't make you the promise I won't do anything. After seeing that, there's no way in hell I'm going to pretend there ain't a problem when there is. This is a really big one, and I'll be damned if I let anything happen to you guys while I sit here. I'm done running when things get tough. He's about to argue for a moment, but... Look, bro, if things ain't good, I'll be the first one out. But allow me this one thing, I right? Just this one time. If it doesn't work out, you'll be the first one to know. You can laugh then, oberate me all you want, but please don't ask me to step aside like I'm incapable of doing anything to help. I've no idea if it is the look on my face or the tone of my voice. Ultimately, although his mouth presses into a thin line, he nods. All right, stay safe, Zach. When he stumbles into the sidewalk and allows the afternoon crowd to swallow him whole, I'd like to think the tiny gleam in his eyes is the closest we can get to optimism in this situation. Upon returning to his apartment, Zachary was greeted by Ashton and Isabella. Now suspicious of what was happening, Ashton informs Zach that he and Isabella will try to get to the bottom of this. He also warns Zach to be careful. Oh, that picture of Kylie's so cute. <laughs> Whether that alone will be enough to give me a peaceful sleep tonight remains to be said. October 30th, Sunday. <gasps> Nothing's happened yet. It goes to November 1st. Okay, it's okay, okay. Nothing's happened yet. Today. Night falls, and despite my best attempts, sleep continues to elude me. With her image still stuck in my head, flashing every few moments, it catches me off guard with Ma's lullaby still echoing in my ears, no longer the soft tune it once was. And the terrible gnawing at the pit of my stomach, it's no wonder I can't bring myself to drift off even for a little while. It is not as if there is a complete lack of things to do while waiting for sleep to come, if it ever will. And at quarter to three in the morning, I find myself cleaning my photography equipment for no other reason than to just pass time. Though if I am going to be honest, it is not the night terrors that are keeping me wide awake tonight, but the anxiety and the hope that I'll hear from Asher Isabella soon. And for what perhaps the 42nd time, my eyes shift over to the end of the table where my phone lies still. I've not heard from them since they left. They haven't promised a call, of course, but a small part of me wishes they would have the common sense at the very least. Waiting is a tough game, and with the concerns stretching out for the minutes far longer than usual, it's impossible for more unpleasant thoughts not to enter my mind. Wasn't he supposed to go and see Bella, Becca? Moreover, it does not help that when the clock finally strikes three, my hand stills. <laughs> It'll be a complete and utter lie to say that my heart didn't leap straight out to my throat in that brief second. My whole body has gone motionless, ears straining for any further sounds. A couple of ten seconds pass. Nothing. Of course, with how old the building I'm staying in, power fluctuations ain't anything new. Every now and then this would happen, leaving a few tenants in a rather bad mood. Nothing unusual anymore after a few years of living here. But this time, the sudden hush brings with it a stillness that raised the hair at the back of my neck and set my heart beating hard against my chest. Something reeks in the air and in an instant this place is no longer home. It's a prison. Every rational fibre in my being screams at me to leave. I force myself to swallow and keep a clear head as I lay down all my cleaning tools and begin gathering together the rest of my things scattered about on the table. The camera's body lends its filters, diffuser, phone, anything my hand could reach, but in the resulting panic, I... Like in the nightmares, it is the scent that reaches me first, a foul, putrid smell filling my lungs with the heavy stink of death. My fingers clamp tightly to the camera, holding it closer to my body as if the tiny thing would provide enough protection to whatever it is with me in the room. It won't, but this is the only comfort I have. Hello? I, I know you're in here! What do you want?! Something moves behind me, a soft scuttling over the walls followed by the squelch and painful creaking of what can only be rotten flesh and broken bones. Without hesitation, I whirl around, my fingers and camera ready, patiently waiting for another movement. Leave! Leave now! There's nothing here for you! There's a brief moment of silence after, and for a short while, I think my pleas worked. Then, with no warning, the shuffling resumes, and along with it are the sobs of a woman. <gasps> oh god. Oh, <sighs> that was hard. 
The light flashes fleetingly one last time, allowing me a glimpse of her grotesque, misshapen features before it is once again lost in the darkness. All of a sudden, her tune changes, no longer a soft cry, but a high-pitched shriek bringing with pain, grief, and anger. Every ounce of courage I've mustered flees from my body at the sound, and the next thing I know, my hand is gripping the knob and I'm wrenching the door open. Her wails follow me as I flee into the night. <sighs> I thought Zach had died. Pacing has always been more of Ashton's thing than mine. When I want to think, I sit and let the minutes tick by until an idea comes to my mind or, or my pulse settles down. And yet, dried leaves and twigs crack under my shoes as I make another pass at them. Terror is too mild to describe what this is. There's no way in hell I'm going back. Whatever she is, pleading won't work. The moment we saw that letter, she's been after us. But I can't run. Not this time. Nearly two hours have gone by since I left the comfort of my room for the solitude of the park. Two excruciating hours since I've started making calls. No one's answering. Not even Rebecca, who has always kept her phone line open in case other people need her. Or Isabella, who frequently checks for, her, for any messages and readily responds as soon as she can afford. I mean, you've only been calling Ash, apparently. It does not help that Ash hasn't said a word where he went off to as well. Damn it! I knew I should have asked him before I let him leave. Knowing him, he can be anywhere. But, but there's really only one place he'll likely be at this time. Your room? <laughs> Ooh. The sun has already peaked over the horizon when I make it to the mansion. I have no idea what I'm expecting to see when I got there. There's Ashton first and foremost. A part of me wishes my assumptions are correct and he's really somewhere close by on a stakeout. But I've never been the lucky sort when it comes to that kind of guessing. And even after I've made a round of the immediate vicinity, I could find neither hide nor hair of him. Calling him does not work either considering how awful the signal here is. He can't be too far if he's really here, but if he is, he would have already noticed me by now. Instead, there is only silence. The kind too quiet to find any source of comfort in. Even the trees seem to have fallen asleep with the rest of the mansion, oblivious to what's happening around it, a small island of stillness in the otherwise fast-paced world. No wonder the whole of Anselm feels at odds with the rest of Luxbourne. While the city is alive, growing every minute, breathing every second, and pulsating with the life, the village remains unmoving, unchanged. It's not surprising the legend still lives up to this day, and why she's still here, walking its hollowed halls. And beyond me, the mansion looms ominously. But now ain't the time for fear. Even if Ash is not here, I've still got to let the rights know what I've seen, what's in their home. And whatever grievance Ash has with them, it doesn't matter. There might be grounds for imprisonment, but they don't deserve a brutal death at the hands of one malicious spirit. And I'm sure Isabella would want the same thing. I head straight for the door without a second thought. It takes a few rings, the sound loud above the foreboding stillness before I hear footsteps on the other side. God and damn it! Only a Nazi would knock at such an ungodly hour! Where's that damn butler when I need him? Hannah went to the apartment. Before long... Has he, has he got an aura around him? What aura is that? Before long, the door swings widely open with Mr. Luke Wright standing behind it. Seething would be a complete understatement to describe him. Like this, I've got no doubt why Ash would find him a suspect. You! Again! It's bloody six in the morning! What the hell is it now? Listen, sir, I know this is not a good time. Oh, it's not a good time! Did you even check the clock before coming here? I bet you didn't! Unlike you, the ones living in this house need to sleep. I mean, he has come twice at six in the morning. <laughs> come back when people are actually awake, or I'll call security on you. Before I can get a word in, he slams the door to my face and bolts it shut with much finality. Wait, sir, you, you gotta hear me out! You're both in danger if you stay in there! Have you seen the news lately? Everything's not a coincidence! You sound like a crazy person. Only silence answers me. Maybe if it was Miss Wright. Oh, who am I kidding? There are limits to how far a person will believe you. Then again, I didn't believe Isabella when she warned us. And now I'm here, desperately trying to save people, even if I'm aware it's completely out of my own capacity to do so. Is this what they call karma? If so, this is one horrible way of turning things around. Taking people's lives, playing with people's fears, making them feel useless. You're around, ain't you? You here? Inside this house? Listening, watching, or oh, whatever it is that you spirits do? What do you want? You're already dead! Leave us! Nothing. I don't even know who I'm talking to, or if a sane person is supposed to be doing that. Can I just say a lot of story things have been popping up in the top left? I gotta check. I don't even know who I'm talking to, or if a sane person is supposed to be doing that. The only thing I got after is a feeling of foolishness washing over me. 
Or perhaps this is just me losing my mind. Out of all the other options and any other ideas, I let my hand slide off the door's surface and fall listlessly to my sides. I can go back to Luxborn. Try to find the others. Try to get out of this mess with them. Or let them know how much in a deep shit we all are. Both sounds good. Either way, my loitering here ain't helping at all. I let the quiet calm me for a few more minutes before standing up and heading out to fetch my bike. It's quite a distance to Luxborn, but if I hurry, I'll reach it in maybe... The rustling stops as soon as I turn around and strain my ears for any other movement around me. Y yo, ass, you there? No answer. If he is here and I've just missed him earlier, already my feet are moving in search for him for the second time, it won't hurt to double check. Triple check, even. With how big the property is, he can be anywhere. If things aren't so urgent, if they ain't so dire that lives are at stake, I'd probably just have waited for him to show up again. But damn it! He needs to realize what exactly it is he's dealing with. That it is not just a petty criminal he can simply throw in jail, that it is something beyond the authority his police badge could ever give him. I'm gonna say you. This guy needs to stop playing the big damn hero, sit down and chill. My breathing comes in short, shallow rust by the time I make it back to where I started. Still no sign of him, and I'm beginning to think I'm just wasting my time here. But that is when I hear it. I'd recognize that melody in a heartbeat. Ma's favourite song. I listen for a while, trying to gauge where exactly from the house it's coming from. My feet start moving before I can stop them. And there, as I circle a corner from a room in the first floor, a single window is open but I can't make out whoever's inside. However, I'm sure the singing comes from there. Still, why I'll hear an old tune here of all places, I won't know. It's not an obscure song by all means, but it's pretty rare to find someone who knows it. And for some reason, Death seems to follow this song around. Panic lodges itself at the base of my throat at once. Whoever's humming might be, I don't want to be the pessimist now, but on the off chance that it is Mrs. Wright. Shit. I shouldn't just barge in there. I can put myself in danger before I can save anyone. Ash will tell me so in the exact same words. Might even write me a dissertation why this is a bad idea if he ain't so lazy. But damn it, damn it, damn it, god damn it. Someone could be in danger. If I die, I die. I can search for Ash, but what if it's too late by then? With how big this place is, he can be anywhere, and it's very likely by the time we come back, someone's already bit the dust. That and the cries grow louder against my ear the longer I linger. Almost impossible to ignore, drawing me in like a moth to a flame. For a moment, I let myself shudder, shaking the uneasy feeling off my head. This can't be a good idea, not by a long shot. Still, I've got to try. Funnily enough, for a couple as high profile as the Wrights, they don't seem to have any security detail patrolling around. Yeah, when when Mr. Wright was like, I'll call security on you, like, what fucking security? A few guards here and there, sure, but no. <laughs> so there are guards. A few guards here and there, sure, but one will expect they'll have a more considering the size of the place. It works to my advantage, though, and I really can't complain when there's a high chance I might get arrested for what I'm about to do. Luckily, the window's wide enough for me to fit through without making any noise. There's certainly no going back now. But as soon as I step into the parlour, all of it ceases, while I find no trace of the woman I heard crying like I'm expecting to. The room is still empty at this time of the morning, and I'm left standing awkwardly in the middle of a hush. Maybe she just hid somewhere. Hello? Are you here? I, I heard someone earlier, and I'm, I'm here to help. Hoping for an answer, I let the question hang in the air. But several seconds merely go by without a word or the slightest movement to indicate there is someone else in here. Has been here. With the stories I've heard, the things I've seen, it takes effort to keep my brain from going into that line of thought. I'm not going to hurt you. If you're here, say something. Nothing. Am I just hearing things? No, I'm pretty sure I heard someone. But with no one responding, I can't help but feel it's silly like this. And the awareness that I've just trespassed a house for nothing because of some voice prickles at me. Suddenly, the silence feels uncomfortable and a needling anxiety slowly creeps up my back. I should get out while I can. If it ain't there, it ain't there. I don't spare the room another glance when I walk back the way I came. Out into the window, I leave before someone else notices. I thought I heard a servant moving around here. Turns out it's just a rat scurrying about. <laughs> I'm so sorry. How unpleasant. Why can't I see his eyes? My heart shoots up into my throat. I can run, the window is a few steps away. I should be able to escape. But instead, out of some foolish impulse, I turn around. 
Perhaps it's because the only impression of the guy has left me in a few times we met is nothing but unsettling. The same what you think it is. You're quite the distance from the kitchen, I'm afraid. Perhaps I should lead you there. <laughs> to the to the hatch? So someone's in here before me. I wasn't here for what you're thinking. They were sobbing and Oh <gasps> The first blow knocks the wind out of me, sending me heaving and crumbling to my knees. Tears well up in my eyes as the pain swells when he twists my wrists behind my back. You've gotta listen to me! Then again, dirty thieves aren't welcome in my kitchen either. For a moment there is only silence and a sudden piercing ache this time at the back of my head. A terrified Zachary went looking for Ashton in the Ermengarde mansion but to no avail. He also tried to warn Luke Wright about the spirit supposedly living in the house but it was simply turned away. After hearing a crying woman, Zachary sneaked into the mansion but was unfortunately spotted by the Wright's butler. The room abruptly tilts on its axis dimming. On the verge of unconsciousness, I can hear the scuffling of foot, the thud of the door being closed, and a woman crying, asking for help. I know no more. October 31st, Monday. This is the furthest we've gone, right? Yeah. The pain is the worst when I come to a sharp, piercing ache somewhere at the back of my head begging to be noticed. But it's nothing I can't handle. Blearily, I open my eyes, expecting to be greeted by sunlight. However, be at the wrong place at the wrong time. Curiosity killed the cat. <laughs> However, the walls that welcome me are unfamiliar. When everything comes into focus, I recognize the place for what it is. A cell, dark, cramped, with the only light coming from the moon outside, streaming through the sole window, barred by thick metal bars. Memory rushes back to me in sharp bursts, the mansion looking for ash in a familiar tune and a woman crying. All while my head still aches from the hit I've received. Still better than a morgue, I guess. Gingerly, I pull myself up, stretching the cramps from my shoulders as I do so, but stopping when a sudden movement induces an acute stinging pain right through my arm. Damn, they got me good. What time is it? I guess he did need to sleep. As expected, they've taken everything I have on my person. Wallet, cell phone, keys, meds, even a small pack of gum. Protocol is protocol. In the first place, ending back in another cell ain't in my agenda. The first time was not a pleasant experience, and this certainly won't be either. Considering who has likely put me in here, it could be much worse. The bars are called to my touch when I approach it, looking for the person on duty. They'd usually allow us to contact someone, and Ashton at least has to know I'm here. He'll be pissed, that I'm quite sure of, but he's the only one who can help me, prove my innocence, and get me out. However much I don't want to rely on him for this, the hallway in front of the cell is empty, but voices float through from further in, likely the poor officers assigned to late night duty. Judging from the snippets of conversation I catch, today's topic over a snack is that moron who thought it was wise to cross the rights. They used other names too, most of which I'd like to have words with them about in the future. But really, I'm in no position right now. Excuse me. Anyone? Silence. Excuse me. I, I need to make a... Blood freezes in my veins and my grip on the bar tightens as the revolting scent reaches my nose. More than the gore, the foul smell of death hangs heavily in the air, and against my better judgement I turn. Her face is the first thing I see. When Zachary finally regained consciousness after being knocked out, he found himself locked up in a precinct. A familiar woman gave him a little visit. Her face is the first thing I see. A gruesome sight on its own, eyes gleaming with nothing but malevolence, blood oozing from a large punctured wound on her head, mouth open wide in a voiceless scream. I clamp on the compulsion to wretch. On instinct, I step back, putting as much distance as this cramped cell will allow between us. The bars rattle as soon as my shoulders hit it. A hindrance not to freedom, but to safety. Get away from me! She moves in short, sudden, bone-crunching twitches. And I know there is no escape. Oh fuck, I killed Zack. I'm screaming for help before I know it, jolting the bars with as much force as I could. Somebody, get me out of here! Anyone, please! Bugger off! Some people are trying to get some sleep here! No! She's here! You've gotta let me out! She's gonna kill me! Someone! She's... <laughs> Oh, so ready for a quick time event. Oh, you poor dear. Fuck. The beginning, unlock a memory fragment. 
You've unlocked a memory fragment. Marianne! Wait! No! No! No, did I kill Zack? No! Mm, I'm gonna check. Okay, I didn't kill Zack. <laughs> Fucking for you. <sighs> okay, well, I think that's enough excitement for one episode. <laughs> Everybody, thank you so much for joining me. This is... Shit is starting to hit the fan. And that memory fragment was very sus, if you ask me. I don't know why I haven't unlocked any other memory fragments, but what are you going to do? Everybody, have a wonderful evening, and I'll see you all on the next episode. Bye!